God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. My friends, we come together on this surprisingly warmer than expected sunny day in November. But we come together today for All Saints Sunday, a day when we particularly remember those who have joined that great cloud of witnesses. Uh, we will be remembering those who joined uh, the saints above the, for the last two years. This was partly a request from uh, session members who said, you know, we haven't had a chance to gather together and to be one another and support one another in grief. Uh, there was an All Saints service last year in, on the Sunday afternoon, the first Sunday afternoon, but many couldn't attend, so we're doing a, I don't want to call it a makeup because that doesn't sound right, <laughs> but we're, we're uh, lifting names of the last two years, so uh, we will carry that with us throughout this day. Uh, as we come together, any announcements about activities or programs in the life of the congregation? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to um, thank Kathy and Renee for organizing a very successful trunk or treat. We had developers with the kids and their parents and grandparents come through. It was a lot of fun. We had a nice day uh, last Sunday. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it was. <laughs> Judy, you're back there in the corner. How much I saw you filling your car on Thursday. How much did you? My car was packed with donations to the Salvation Army. And um, I can just tell you they would be so very, very grateful, especially to see all the calls coming in that they need this. Okay. That's great. Others. Well, my friends, let us now come together and worship God. Please join me in our call to worship. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sins that cling so closely, and let us run with the perseverance of the race that is set before us. Let us worship God.
confession. When God sets the table of the Lamb, all are welcome. The young, the old, those who were faithful, and those who failed. Those who followed Jesus and those who lost their way. Let us confess to our God our unsaintly ways, knowing how quick God is to forgive. <clears throat> forgiven and made new. We can taste the yeast flavor of grace. We can, we can drink the deep wine of hope. And we can find our home in God's heart, receiving mercy and new life. Thanks be to God.
The scripture reading for day for today is from Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, his first letter, the fourth chapter, the thirteenth through the eighteenth verses. Listen now to the word of God. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May the Lord bless this reading to our understanding and our use. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Fred Roberts, I said Roberts, not Rogers, so Fred Roberts, he was a professor of cultural anthropology at Michigan State University. Several years ago, he received a grant from the Lilly Endowment, and he and his team studied eight mainline congregations in the Detroit and Lansing area. The congregations that he chose were to be relatively stable and healthy, whatever that means. But they were not to be steeple churches. That means they weren't to be large churches, but large enough that he could take a look at the full breadth of congregational life. The congregation I served in Farmington Hills was one of those selected and studied. Dr. Roberts, Roberts sat there and observed during worship and meetings. He conducted surveys and with his team interviewed several folks. The same was going on in seven other churches. His book came out, Be Not Afraid. Of course, the first thing I did when I got my hands on the copy was to skim it and find every reference to the church I was serving. But then I read it page by page, and he had several interesting findings. His title comes from his primary observation that all too often churches obsess and worry about growth. And Roberts more or less says, stop worrying. Look at what you're doing. The kind of ministry that is happening each and every day, there's a lot of vitality, build on it, be not afraid. Of those findings, though, the one that struck me the most, because, you know, it's patently obvious, and yet we don't see it. Roberts was struck time and time again about the realism with which congregations face death and dying, about the compassion that churches show. And he remarked, this is really countercultural, And perhaps it's one of the most radical things that we do as a church. Now, we've lost touch with much of that ministry these last couple of years because of distance, because death is all around us. It's made it hard not to be led into cynicism and despair. But today, on All Saints Sunday, it will be a reminder of who we are as a faith community, that we proclaim hope. While met, some may ponder why hope, we know why. For as Christians, we know what Paul wrote. 
we do not grieve as those who have no hope. We do grieve. We know that death is the final enemy. We know the pain that that final enemy creates when it touches our life and snatches from us and our loving grasp those whom we love. We do grieve and grief is all too normal, but we grieve with hope and we encourage one another with those words. The church in Thessalonica was grieving and they were worried. They, like other new Christians, were awaiting the promised return of Christ. They had hoped that it would be any time, any moment, it would be in their lifetime. But time had passed, and family and friends had died. They worried that those who had died before the coming of Christ would not be included in the promised resurrection of the dead. Now, I know their theological issue about the coming of Christ may not be ours, but like them, we can all become frightened by our own fragility and by our own helplessness. And we are impatient with ambiguity. We much prefer for things to be predictable and secure. Cataclysmic events like the pandemic can shatter us and make us worry about the future. But Paul, out of pastoral concern, reminds the Thessalonians and us today that we can dare to have hope. He tells those who are worried about those who have already died that all will be gathered with Christ whenever that is. He reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Paul isn't engaging just in wishful thinking. He recognizes grief and suffering. He doesn't deny the presence of death and destruction in the world. If anything, he's the one who points time and time again to the cross, which clearly points to the presence of suffering and death in the world. He doesn't deny its reality. All of our frailty and vulnerability and ambiguity they're not to be shunned or eliminated from our thinking. They're to be embraced and accepted as marks of ourselves as a people that have been created by God. But in fact, it is through all those experiences of being hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down, that space is opened up in our lives for the faith in Christ who alone brings hope. We face death, but we do so with the hope that we've been given through Christ, that death does not have the final word. Think what power there is in that affirmation. Death may be the final enemy, but death is not the victor. Christ has risen. And that, my friends, is why we do not grieve as those who have no hope. In fact, we live differently than those who have no hope. For you can't really divorce the love of God here and now from our great hope that death and dark will, darkness will not have the final word. One has said what we believe about life and what we believe about the end of life are the same thing. We can't talk about the love of God here and now, whether it's what we see in nature, in the love of a parent for a child, or in the fight for justice for the poor. We cannot see the love of God apart from the love of God when a person faces death and darkness beyond. Our faith and hope is that God comes to us in Christ, in life, in death, and in life beyond death. And that's simply why we're different from other organizations in the world, different from other gatherings of people. We're the church, and we can deal realistically 
and compassionately with death because we have hope. We encourage one another. I've seen it repeatedly in congregations. Well, we can't embrace and hug one another right now the way we really want to, but there's still cards, and I know there's still plenty of cakes and casseroles that are going around. It's in that simple saying to another, I'm praying for you and your family. It's saying, have hope. William Sloan Coffin Jr. has written, it's hope that helps us keep the faith, despite the evidence. Knowing that only in so doing has the evidence any chance of changing. Repeat it. It's hope that helps us keep the faith despite the evidence. Knowing only that in so doing and so hoping that has the evidence any chance of changing. With hope we don't just endure, and knowing that Christ is the victor over death, we are strengthened and empowered to change the evidence of a world that wants to say there's no hope. We're in tough times. COVID might be waning. I rejoice that my elementary age grandchildren got their first vaccination yesterday. But we aren't quite sure. We're not quite sure we can have confidence in the economy. Social and political divisions fracture hope of unity. We're not Pollyannish. We know it's rough and it could get rougher. We know the evidence. But with hope, we strive to change the evidence. Encouraging those who need to find a new joy Resisting hoarding that leads to selfishness. Resisting division and differences among each other. With hope, we're willing to share and reconcile. Yes, especially on a day like this, we feel the deep loss of those we love. She's not across the breakfast table anymore. He's no longer lying there in bed. The evidence is we'll never see them again, and it can weigh us down. But with hope in the resurrection of Christ, that evidence is changed. We grieve and we weep. We feel exhaustion, but we're encouraged by one another. We're encouraged through hope, hope in Christ. Christ who died for us, Christ who rose for us, Christ who will come again and lay that great heavenly feast for all the saints before us. Thanks be to God. Amen. My friends, let's join together in singing the first and the last verses of hymn 291, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
first, I have to let you know, this is the closest green I can come to, both Packers green and money green. So, <laughs> what I'm here today to do is talk to you a little bit about the stewardship campaign this year as, as chairman of the Finance Committee of Session to ask for your support in 2022. We will celebrate your gifts to FPC next Sunday, Consecration Sunday on the 14th and all your gifts, but especially your financial pledges for next year. This has been a year of transitions for each of us and for our church. The one constant for many of us has been the presence of our loving community of faith, maintained by our church staff, our session, and our deacons, and the support you, our members and friends, have provided both financially and with your time and talents. We should all be proud that our congregation has persevered through all the challenges and transitions of the COVID pandemic has presented. Our session, session committees, and deacons have continued to provide leadership and care for our congregation. We have maintained our strong outreach in the community via the mission committee's PPOW for Powell. The session has moved quickly to hire an interim pastor to guide our search for a new permanent pastor. We believe FPC is on a firm foundation and well positioned to continue our faith journeys in the coming years. Your pledge for 2022 will allow us to continue to serve our community and each other. You should have received a pledge card in the mail this past week, post office allowing. Um, please bring it to church next Sunday so that we can dedicate all our pledges in one special ceremony that Pastor Sue is going to provide for us. It should be interesting and unique. And I hope you will stay for our COVID safe lunch and that time of fellowship after, after worship next Sunday. If you've already turned in a reservation for the luncheon, great. If you haven't, we have a few more forms in the back so that you can um, fill it out today so we know how many people to um, bring lunch for next week. So I look forward to celebrating Consecration Sunday with all of you next Sunday, November 14th. Thank you. Please join me in our call to offering. We read, turn to God all the gifts given to us, our talent, our time, our money, our love. We give through the life and ministry of this congregation in the offering plate, online, in relationship with one another. We give in thanksgiving to God, particularly this day, for placing us among the saints who have borne witness to his grace. Let us pray. We seek not to be saints so much, but simply your people. We have been blessed beyond imagination. And so pray, as we offer these gifts, that they would be used to touch the lives of the broken, the lonely, the seeking, the hungry, the hopeless, all those who are our brothers and sisters. Amen. As we prepare to name the saints who have gone before us and also to break bread together at the Lord's table, I would invite you to share any joys or concerns you may have this day. Well, my friends, we will now prepare to name the saints. And what we will be doing, Colleen and I will be going down, I will be naming the saints. As I say the name, if there's family present, I would ask, I would invite you upon hearing the name and the ringing of the bell, which Tom will be doing, that you come forward and light a candle. And for those members of the church who have gone into that great communion of saints who do not have family here, Colleen will be lighting the candle for them. After we've concluded that, we will open it up that any of you who would just simply like to come forward and light a candle in memory of family, other family who may not be related to this church or friends, 
you're certainly invited to do so. It'll be a time, except for the ringing of the bell at the ringing of the church members' names, uh, will be in silence and in prayer. Let's come together and bear witness to the saints who have come before us. We remember those who go before us. Arlene Smith. Nikki Engel. forward to light a candle for others, please do so.
Let us pray. Number us among your saints, O God, and join us with the faithful of every age, that strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory when we stand before your throne of grace. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table, if you have the I would ask that you have your communion elements available for yourself. I will direct you as to how we open them when the appropriate time comes. They're on a tray by the offering plate if you need to get them. My friends, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let us pray. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, we praise you for saints and martyrs, for the faithful in every age who have followed your Son and witnessed to his resurrection. From every race and tongue, from every people and nation, you have gathered them into your kingdom. You have shown them the path of life and filled them with the joy of your presence. How glorious is your heavenly realm, where the multitude of your saints rejoice with Christ. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Sent to be our Savior, he took our flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. His words are true. His touch brings healing. To all who follow him, he gives abundant life. And when the evil sought to destroy him and he lay in the darkness of death, you raised him from the grave. He is our risen Lord forever. And remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And my friends, now we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory ever. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Every time you eat this, drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. I ask that you take a clear tab and pull it back. My friends, the 
bread of heaven. Join me in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. We pray that we may follow the example of the saints as we live our lives in faith and hope. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Please join me in our closing hymn for all the saints.
said before, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Because, my friends, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Those saints who have gone before us, to whom we look, to whom we see, and know of their lives live faithfully in Christ. May we go in peace. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Alleluia and amen. amen.